The research out of your organisation showed that the investment in utility scale renewables was at $6.5 billion in 2022. The next year, 2023, it was down from $6.5 billion to $1.5 billion. Is that stalling investment in renewables? Will the government get to its target of 82% renewables by 2030? Well, the policy that was driving renewables was the renewable energy target. Now, that ended in 2020. And so the government in 2023 put a new policy in place called the Capacity Investment Scheme to build 34 gigawatts of new renewables and energy storage. That's about half the total generation of the generation fleet in Australia. It's a big build between now and 2030. So that's coming in. But there are some glitches. Places like New South Wales, the planning process is just taking too long. It can take over three years to get approval for a wind farm up, for example. And when we're trying to transition at speed and at scale, that's really not good enough. Is that that's out of the New South Wales government? But where else? Queensland looks like things are happening much more quickly. Is the concern, though, around transmission lines through farming areas and through regional areas that don't want transmission lines, is that also an issue that you've got to try and manage as an industry? Social licence is absolutely critical and you can't take communities or people for granted and so you absolutely need to have that engagement. And there needs to be benefit sharing, Kieran. So if you go into a community, why not offer the people in that community a lower electricity rate as a result of hosting those types of infrastructure? People would love that. So there are models to get this done. We don't want to make shortcuts, but at the same time, we don't want to get bogged down uh, and uh, not able to transition the speed. Required. Now, yours is the, the Smart Energy Council. Is nuclear a, an alternative that you'd be open to? So n nuclear is an amazing technology. And many places around the world rely on nuclear, you know, where they've got little land, they've got no renewable resources. In Australia, though, it really doesn't make much sense because nuclear will come online in the late 2030s uh, and it is the most expensive um, option. So... Solar and wind coming in at about $45 per megawatt hour. Nuclear would come in at about $350 per megawatt hour. So if you want your power bills to triple or quadruple in price, build a nuclear power plant. But in, in terms of the sustainability, once you build a nuclear power plant, that just sits there and goes for a long, long time. With, with wind and solar, don't you have that issue where you have to replace, repair and so on? Yeah, it's, it's not so much re repair and replace. Uh, it's more about the, the buffer of storage. So... Solar and wind are variable. That's why you need pumped hydro storage, like Snowy 2.0, why you need big batteries uh, to actually make that, available, that power available on demand to power the entire economy. And finally, on the EV question, the government's talking about having the superchargers or the fast chargers doubling in their capacity over the next year. How do you see the trajectory of EV sales and the charging infrastructure? So people have underestimated how quickly this transition will happen. Uh, new technology coming into Australia can see a, 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 a charging um, in 10 minutes to almost 700 kilometres of range. So very, very quick charging times coming. Battery swapping technology as well. And the cost of EVs are now coming down uh, and are going to push the old petrol cars basically out of the market. It's going to happen quick, quicker than people think. John Grimes, appreciate your time. Thanks. Pleasure.